glitch, you know, throws one bit in RAM. That can throw a lot of these little computer systems way out of whack and leave no evidence of what caused it. Yeah, that's true. Cascade it failure. Be, it could just be, you know, an alpha particle or whatever. It could be, um, you know, other... I just you know, like that in your bug. Your bioelectromagnetic interference. So, and I don't think, I don't think, um, Toyota's acting like we understand mechanical stuff, but I don't think they are acknowledging the fact that these kind of little flaws can happen, not often, but rarely, in the computer stuff, too. Well, you know... But I, but I love Toyota. I'm going to buy more of them, and I think it's not unsafe. Oh, wow, that endorsement, yeah. man. Yeah, dude. Well, uh, let me ask you this. I mean, you understand how technology is built, obviously. You know, Apple II, you know, the beginning of that, the PC revolution, man. But... I read this story about you, and I want to confirm it here, kind of you know, live in front of a, an intimate and small group of people, is <laughs> I heard that one of the blue boxes that you built, you used old school. This is, I can't remember. Like what you yourself, know. in college, we, a lot of people were discovering, oh my God, I can use this credit card and call my girlfriends. Yeah. I didn't like that. That's like stealing. You're getting a call for free. You're not paying for it. Yeah. So all of my own calls, I would make sure I paid for. But I discovered all these technology devices, and I had to play with them. I had to explore. You have so to, Steve man. So Jobs and I, we, we would call random numbers that we didn't know. Like, we'd ask for a Ritz Hotel in Paris, and one time we called, decided we'll call the Vatican and see if we can talk to the Pope. And I made up a story that I was Henry Kissinger with Nixon in the summit in Moscow, and I got to talk to the bishop who was going to be the translator, and he said, I just spoke with Henry Kissinger. <laughs> and I said, I want to make a confession. <laughs> what? You, what conversation five minutes before you made that call or kind of herbal enhancements went into that decision, man? <laughs> I just... I, just I, have, I, I don't know, but you know, you, you are a master at improv. You, you really are. And, and the, one of the first, first rules of improv is always say yes if something strange is happening. Let, let the world of creativity around you go to the next level. Always say, yeah, 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 if somebody has some crazy idea. And I don't know, we just think of anything crazy. I don't know where it comes from. Where does an idea for you know, a new technique in a computer come from? Yeah, that's true. Uh, how about I call my cousin? No, how about we call the Pope? Okay, let's do it. <laughs> yeah. If it, hey, and if it, sounds, you know, if it sounds funny and entertaining, I've been, I've been blessed to have a very good life, but I've had a very enjoyable life, and I like to do these things that are unusual, interesting, the sort of things they'd make movies out of or tell stories out of. I, I love that part of life, not super serious, and you can't ever have fun, you can't ever tell a joke. I'm kind of on the opposite spectrum. And I think that a lot of playing with this misbehavior, but not being really a bad guy who's yeah. going to rip people off, I think that that's really a big element of developing creativity, creative thinking in your own mind. And almost all the creative um, technical people I've ever met have stories like that in their background, how they tricked the guy. The, 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 the school administration almost always comes into play. God, I, they had a stack of stuff on me so thick, and they could never prove it was me because <laughs> the, I was the too dossier. smart. I, I was smart enough. I got caught so many times in middle school, I learned you don't, if you're going to play some pranks, you don't tell a single person. You do it all on your own, and nobody gets, catches you. <laughs> Full deniability. Yeah. Now, what, you know, the problem, I think, to let you guys use the blue box and Captain Crunch with the 2600 megahertz was in-band signaling, right? So you, you, well, you accepted... What, what it was signals. doesn't matter. I mean, it was a flaw in the phone system that you could put tones into an American phone and dial anywhere in the world for free. It was kind of a weird thing to discover. But, you know, it was just... it's. It's not that it had some important relevance to the world, but you know what? The thinking that went into trying to design the best blue box anyone in the world could make, some of, the, some of the technical thoughts really came about later. It came about in my own mind. It came about in my own um, designs of even the Apple computers well, and it, some of the techniques. If I could tap into that same thinking, right? If you put on the same hat that you had back then. You yeah, know, and remember, it's not the this. thinking. It's more the motivation. Okay. I wanted this fun device. That's a bigger motivation than a paycheck sometimes. These little intrinsic rewards that mean a lot to you on the inside, not the ones you show the world on the outside, like your title, your salary, how many yachts you have, your home, you know, your awards you get. Those are extrinsic rewards everyone sees. But the ones that just are personal to you and mean a lot to you are going to drive you, and you're going to achieve those. It's like the floppy disk for Apple. We had a meeting, and it was two weeks before the CES show. First time ever they were going to allow personal computers. It meant Apple... Commodore, Radio Shack, long time ago, three companies. And three people were going to go from Apple, our marketing guy, Steve Jobs, and our sales guy. 
And I've never been out of California. I'd never seen Las Vegas. I'd heard yeah. about it. I said, if we have a floppy disk, can we show it? In the back of my head, I knew if I develop a floppy disk in two weeks, I'll get to go to Las Vegas. <laughs> they have to have oh. one. That kind of motivation. <laughs> and I and did it. Worked every day, Christmas and New Year's and everything. And just barely, 6 a.m. the morning of the show, had it all done. And you could type, run, checkbook, and it would run the checkbook program off of floppy disk. But the motivation was so much greater. You know, you can't buy that, you know. And I don't know. I don't know how you can hire that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, hey, by the way, go on to LinkedIn. We're talking about these social networks and all. Yeah. Go on to LinkedIn. What you do is you send somebody, hey, got a great job offer for you. I'll send you, a, uh, I'll send you um, an application form. Yeah. You can send them a PDF. And of course, they could launch a PDF. It could you take advantage of some Adobe flaws or it could be some other um, you know, Trojan program. And once you run a program on somebody's computer, there's so many ways to con people still. You know. well, let, let me ask you about that, because if you, 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 know, you looked at that same motivation, intellectual curiosity, and then you look at social networking today, how popular it's become, how many people are on it, and you look at the cloud, you know, all, all these sort of new technologies, what do you think are driving the, the, the sort of hacker of tomorrow? Like, what kind of innovation? You, you know, that, there's that please rob me dot But there's, there's still the white hat and the black hat hackers, so... Yeah. Um, you know, the hackers. But even, even the white hats, like what's, what are the threats that we're not anticipating now? If you kind of look at this technology change, what are some of the big things that you think from your perspective and experience, man? I'll be truthful, I'm not a hacker. Um, you know, we hear a lot about things like identity theft, but I don't really think about it that much. Um, I, I, I think it's still a matter of education. Everyone's open to, you know, what hackers, where they want to get. They kind of can smoothly talk their way into it, and they know all the formulas. They, you go on to, to the, the popular websites. There, for example, I was, just, I was just backstage. I was checking out one of my favorite sites. It's uh, pleaserobme.com, oh, yeah, right. where people post, I'm thing. not at my home today, and they're on Twitter tweets yeah. and on Facebook, and then they get, people send them in. They get duplicated on this website. No, what, I love how they position that site because it's like, I, I think they call it like a robbery opportunity portal. <laughs> it sounds a lot better that way. But, but you know, that, that's, that's one interesting application, I think, of people that are looking at this data, they're looking at technology and saying, how can I leverage it for bad purposes? And going back to the days of the Apple II, what well, and I, looking but at... I think okay. the white hat hacker, though, is... How can I leverage it to have fun, to play with, play with people or show off something that they don't, didn't think was possible? It's not, you know, it's not to take money. It's not to make money. It's, yeah. not, to, it's not to even cost curiosity. computer files get lost or anything like that. Yeah, just curiosity. Yeah. There's an awful lot of that. Oh, there is, or, man. Well, I think you'll find a lot of that. Those guys, track. I think, probably understand best how to even counteract the, the real bad hackers. Yeah. But, you know, the, they're usually insiders. The deal is that... There's a lot of people, well, here, we have the job of uh, helping protect our communities, help, helping people uh, just uh, avoid the bad guys or deal with them. The idea is we all know stuff. We can work together, often in public-private partnership, to uh, make things happen. Uh, the Secret Service runs a pretty good uh, regional electronic crimes task force. And the deal is for people at companies, which see a lot of this, to get people to uh, stand up even as private citizens, to stand up and to help the uh, people trying to deal with the bad guys. In my case, uh, I've told the Secret Service and others, hey, you know a cop who needs a hand? Uh, give him my phone number. And for that matter, anyone here, if you're in enforcement of any sort, uh, if you need my uh, contact info, email craig at craigslist.org, and don't worry about when you call me. I've gotten some odd calls, but the deal is... You know, we all got to work together. We got to follow through uh, actions in addition to words. You know, people selling bad tickets on Craigslist, people advertising that, oh, I'll sell, buy this from you, and they ship you junk. That's really bad because it hits real individuals, just little guys. It was their money. I mean, yeah. person to person, the best thing you can do in the world isn't to design new technology for the world. I think it's you know to stoop down and help tie a child's shoelace. One person helping another, and you get. And when you have something like that happen, somebody. Totally ripped me off. I trusted them. I believed what they said, and they shipped me, you know, some blank box instead of a radio. Mm. That's just that's just really horrible. So, you, so do you think taken off of both of those points, 
that reputation 